Hi, welcome along to Barbecue Life UK. My name's Tom. Today we're going to be cooking pork shoulder on the Audi Camaro. If you're new here, then please do make sure you subscribe to the channel. Make sure you like, leave us a comment, and let me know what you think. Let's get on with this cook. So we've got a nice bit of pork shoulder just from a UK supermarket, which I've taken the skin off of, and then I've removed all of the pieces of hard fat that I can see. We're going to hit this with some rub. So I'm using hogwash rub from the Rusty Barbecue Company. We're going to get this covered all the way around the whole pork shoulder. We're going to cook in this pork shoulder low and slow today, aiming for a temperature of about 110, 115 degrees on the Camaro. And we're going to take this up to 96, 97 degrees, probe it till it's tender. So once we've got that first layer of rub on, we're going to go on with a second layer of rub. This is core powder. So this is a sweet heat barbecue rub, it's got a bit of heat to it, nice and sweet as well. So we're going to go a light dusting of that over the top of that hogwash. Again, making sure you're getting all the nooks and crannies. And then you want to let that rest. So we've got a lump of charcoal in the Camaro today, nice big chunks. And then a couple of wax woodies that we're going to get lit. So like them wax woodies once they're nicely tucked into the charcoal and then let them heat the charcoal up. Once they've gone out, you can then add your smoking wood. I'm using chips today. These are beach chips. I'm going to get them in. And once they're in, get your deflector plate in and your grill grate. And then I'm using the extended grate today. Make sure that you've got this locked in place so that it doesn't move. And then a drip pan directly underneath that. I'm using the drip pan up here because I don't want the fat to heat up down on the deflector plate. So we've got the daisy wheel set all the way open and the bottom vent all the way open just as we start to come up to temp. I'm using the Inkbird IBT 4XS to monitor the temperatures of this cook today. So we've got that resting in there at the moment. So we've come up to 84 degrees and now's the time we want to start slowing the, the raising of the temperature so that we don't overshoot our desired temperature. So we're going to close that bottom vent and we're going one and a half of the dots on there and this should just bring the temperature up slowly to 110 and when we hit 110 and we're happy that it's stable get on with your pork. So we're now currently two hours in. I thought I'd just give you a little update on vent settings and things like that. So first of all, I had it set to one and a half of the little dots on the bottom setting. And I had the top daisy wheel open completely. So once it settled down, it sat at 110 for about 20, 25 minutes. And then it just gradually started to creep up and creep up and creep up. So I took the bottom vent down to just one row of the dots and I half closed the daisy wheel at the top. It still carried on rising, which is strange. It's not something that it normally does. So I ended up taking that bottom vent down to half the width on the, on the three dots and about a quarter open on the daisy wheel at the top. And it did gradually come down. Then it got too low. So it got around to about 105. So I've just taken that daisy wheel back up to quarter and gone to one full row of dots and it's just starting to come back up. I'm hoping that it's now going to sit around 100 to 115 degrees C. So we're now five and a half hours in and I've been at a stall for just over two hours where this temperature has only risen four degrees in just over two hours. So I've decided that I'm going to wrap the pork in foil just to help it push through that stall so you want to wrap it nice and tightly get your probe back in and then get it back into the barbecue leave your temperatures as they were and then once you've hit your 96 take it off and you want to let it rest let it rest for half an hour before you start unwrapping we've still got a nice bit of bark left and then it's time to pull so all of the juices that are in that foil were on the bottom of the plate and once it's pulled you want to mix them through. It's pulling away nicely. And 
and the bark is still nice and crunchy. So this cook turned out to be everything that barbecue can be, which is completely unpredictable. For the size of this pork shoulder, I was expecting about a five hour cook. And here we are eight and a half hours later, and we're only just ready. The reason for that is a stall in the middle. Two and a half hours it sat and only moved three degrees. And I was a bit reluctant to wrap because I wanted to make sure I kept a nice bike on the outside. But after two and a half hours, I thought, I've got no choice, I'm going to have to wrap this. But as it was, I still managed to keep the bark on the outside anyway. Let's give this a taste. Wonder a little barky bit. Got a nice bite. There's a little bit of heat from the core powder. Predominantly sweetness coming through from the, uh, the pork rub itself. It's really nice pulled pork. So if you like what we're doing here at Barbecue Life UK, then please do subscribe to the channel. Make sure that you like the video and leave us a comment. Thank you very much for watching.